Barkley. This is Lee Majors. Here are some scenes from last week's episode, part one, of Legend of a General. Captain Chavez would like to see you before you leave Rio Blanco. What's he want? He didn't say, senor. Uh, the captain is in his office. Would you come? wanted to see me. Well, senor, I'm afraid I cannot permit you to leave Rio Blanco. Why not? You are guilty of obstructing justice, senor. You are under arrest. Senor, the Barclay family has rather extensive financial interests in my country. So that's it. We kick Vicente out of our house so your hired guns can grab him and haul him back to Mexico. Or Diaz will make an awful lot of trouble for us. I would suggest you think about it. If you're threatening to confiscate our property unless we withdraw our support of the general, you, well, you'll just simply have to make good your threat. Senora, your son Heath has been arrested. Arrested? For what? For aiding Vicente Ruiz to escape from Mexico. He is in jail in Rio Blanco, awaiting trial. Your son could receive the death penalty for his crime. Something wrong with the food, senor? Not a thing. If you like garbage, eat it. Or I will have my men feed it to you. You eat it. Buenos dias, comandante. Si, sí, si. Sí. Back again, huh? Si, sí, mi comandante. Bug him up. Wait. Get back to your post. Come on. I received a letter from the Minister of Justice. A trial has been set for two weeks from tomorrow at the District Court in Hermosillo. So? Well, I thought I might point out to you that if you receive the death penalty, it will be carried out immediately. Is that all? You want to die, Barclay? Well, I didn't know I had a choice. Ah, but you do. Even though you broke the law when you helped Ruiz to escape, I'm sure the government could be persuaded to drop the charge against you if you cooperated with it. Just exactly what do you mean by cooperate? You could write a letter to your family and ask them to withdraw the protection they are giving Ruiz. You're wasting your time. Even if I wrote a letter to my family, they'd just pay no attention to it. What kind of a family do you have that would let you die to protect a thief and a traitor? He's not a thief and a traitor. The thief and the traitor, Captain, is in Mexico City. And his name is Diaz. Very well, Gringo. It is your life. Don't bother with him, senor. He's nothing, nobody. 
El payaso, he is called the clown. A borracho, senor. He's always drunk. If he's not in the cantino drinking, he's in here sobering up. He is right, senor. But not this time. I have something for you. Look inside my sombrero. Viva Ruiz! to talk to Vicente. He and Pepe are packing to leave. What? Yes, he found out about he. How did he find out? Oh, that man from San Francisco, the Mexican consul. Cortinas? Yes, he was here. I, I tried to stop him, but he told Vicente that Heath was in jail because of him. You should not have kept that from me. We didn't want to deceive you, Vicente. But we didn't want to risk having you leave here while we were still in Sacramento. Senator Perkins is a friend of ours. We went there to see if he could help us with Heath. What could he do? After all, he has to act within the limits of his office. What could he really do? Nothing. It all boils down to this, Vicente. The State Department doesn't feel that it can intervene on his behalf at this time. And there's another thing. Just before we left Sacramento, the Diaz government asked that you be returned to Mexico. Our government is complying. The order will be in the U.S. Marshal's hand in San Francisco by morning. They can't do that. They can't just send him back to Mexico. It's all right, senorita. It's all right. If Diaz wants me back that bad, he can have me. I will go to the Mexican consulate tomorrow, and that is the only way. No, it's not the only way, Vicente. If you want to go back to Mexico, fine. But don't go back in shackles. Go back because you choose to, because you're going to fight. But what about Heath? Well, Jared and I talked that out on the way home. As long as Diaz thinks he can exchange Heath for you, Heath will be safe. And by that time, we'll be in Rio Blanco. We? We. We're going back with you. Well, we got to bring Heath home. You'd better take some men with you. No, too many men would create a tension at the border. Oh, we better take Morgan and Bowers. They do know the territory. Well, Vicente? It could be done. I have some compadres in the hills who will ride with us. See? See, it could be that. Vicente is going home, the closer he gets to the border, the less trouble it would be for us, eh? Eh? <laughs> Don't do no good, there's Don Loco, he sees snakes.
Saturday, and I want you to tell me everything. May I do something for you, Captain? I want to search the church, Padre. You know I cannot permit that. Then I will search it without your permission. I have not heard that the church's right to give sanctuary has been revoked, Captain. Who are you hiding in there, Padre? It is my impression, Captain Chavez, that President Diaz has all the enemies he wants right now. I do not think he wishes to make another enemy of the church by violating her rights. Do you? Indeed, I am sure the president would deal very harshly with any rash young officer who made additional trouble for him at this time. He's hiding the gringo. There's a man around the church. He'll have to come out sometime. Pronto, in again. Guarda la gaise. Pepe looks kind of done in, Nick. It's been a long trip for him. All right, let's stop here for a while. That's a good idea, senor. You don't have to stop because of me. We're not. We're all pretty well done in. So are the horses. Let's camp right here. How is it? I think it's just a flesh wound. Senores Berkeley! I want to talk with you, senores! Miguel. Should have known it was too easy to last. Can you hear me, senores? We hear you! I'm coming out! Convinced. 
convinced that you're not taking Vincenti back. <laughs> I was saying the same thing about you, senor, not an hour ago. The senores are muy obstinado, I said to my compañeros. They will never surrender Vincenti to us. We will have to kill both of them first and their compañeros. <laughs> Maybe so, they said. Maybe so. But talk to them, Miguel. Give them the chance. Tell them that if they will give us Vincente, they and their amigos can return safely to the hacienda. Have you said what you've got to say? <laughs> My compadres are reasonable, man. I, too, am reasonable. You be reasonable with us. You are trapped in this canyon. What has already happened to one of your men will happen to all of you if you try to move. Talk it over, senores. Think about it. Take your time. My compadres are very patient men. So am I. I'm sorry, Mother. I didn't know there was anyone with you. Audra, come in. This is Mr. Ralston, the United States Marshal from San Francisco, my daughter, Audra. Hello. It's my pleasure, Miss Barkley. Mr. Ralston has come for Vicente. Oh. What is it? An expedition order. Your mother tells me General Ruiz isn't here. She graciously offered to let me see for myself, but I assured her that wouldn't be necessary. Well, that's very nice of you. But perhaps you could tell me where I might find General Ruiz. Oh, I'm sorry. I really don't know where he is at the moment. Miss Barclay? No. No, I couldn't. The general didn't say where he was going when he left? Well, yes, in a way. I mean, he did mention several possible destinations, but I don't think he finally settled on one. Do you know, dear? No, I don't. I, I'm terribly sorry. I'm sure you are. Mr. Ralston, may I ask you a question, a hypothetical question? Of course. What if the government discovered that the general had returned to Mexico voluntarily? Would it still issue a wanted poster on him? Ruiz has been ordered back to Mexico. As long as he's this side of the border, whether it's 50 feet or 50 miles, he's still subject to arrest. And as far as the government is concerned, there are no extenuating circumstances. Such as? Well, the fact that if the Diaz government gets its hands on the general, he will be convicted of a crime he did not commit. He will be sent to prison, and he will die in prison. Unfortunately, that doesn't concern us. It's between General Ruiz and the Mexican government. Is there anything more you wish to tell me, Mrs. Barclay? No, Mr. Ralston. Nothing. Good day, ladies. You'll have every sheriff between here and the border after... Yes, Vincent. but Jared and Nick knew this might happen. They, they'll take the back roads. I was hurt worse than I thought. He needs a doctor. Well, now, how do you propose to go about doing that? I'm willing to make a break for it. If I can get to Hazeville. No, 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 no. You wouldn't make it halfway across that canyon. Well, what are we going to do? Sit here and wait until they come after us? They're not coming after us. They're not going to risk killing Vincenti in a gunfight. They want him alive. If we could just get him down out of those hills, out in the open. Perhaps we can. How? By making them think I'm going to escape their trap. What are they doing over there? <laughs> Waiting for a chance to make a run for it. It'd be good to get home, huh? Let's see. Oh, only this time it'll be different, huh? live without being afraid, without being hunted, to have a home, a little land, not to have to steal a few moments with your own wife. Everything Vicente said we were waiting for. After the next fight, always it was after the next fight, never now. Think of Mexico. Think of the people. Never think of yourself. Ride with me, amigo mio. Forget today. We fight for tomorrow. Always it was tomorrow. We'll have that tomorrow. Have Rafael and Alfredo bring the horses up here. We may need them fast. Muy bien. 
Well, senores. I don't know. It might work. It will work. You see, I know Miguel. I rode with him for many years. When he is taken by surprise, he does not stop to think. He does the obvious. What if he forgets that he's supposed to take you back alive? You're taking a pretty big chance. It will not be the first time, nor the last. All right, we'll try it. Now, the minute we leave, you get him to Hayesville. There's a doctor there. But keep quiet about Vincenti. We'll need 12 hours to get to the border. If we get there at all. Oh, Heath. How did you find me? I begged Father Esteban to tell me where you were. I want to help you. You'd better stay out of it. I can't. But your father? It is up to him if he wishes to be afraid. I can't be afraid with him or for him. It doesn't matter. There's nothing you can do. You should have made a run for it instead of staying up here. Chavez knows I'm hiding in the church. And these men are watching. We cannot get horses here. But if you could get to my father's hacienda. But how? There must be a way. You must find a way. I will. Will you have a horse waiting for me? When? Tonight. Will you go with me? No. But if Chavez finds out that you helped me? He won't. Well, then what about us? He's. What we had was meant only for Rio Blanco. It is like a flower that can't be transplanted. Or wine that can't travel. What we had started when you came and will be over when you're gone. I must go now. I'll get the horses. Be careful, Papa. I will, Pepe. You know, twice in my life, I have cried. When your mother died, you saw me then. The other time you could not see because you were just a baby, hours old. 
I told your mother that I cried because I was happy. But she knew that the tears were because I had nothing to give you. Nothing to offer, not even a promise that I could keep. She knew that your mother. She said to me, Vincente, you have much to give your boy. Honor, dignity, and a dream for your country. Give that to him, she said, and you will give him the world. Bebe, if your mother was right, if I have those things to give you, let them be your gift. Gracias, papá. Good luck, Vicente. Gracias. to fall for a trick like that. <laughs> we pulled it once on the French at San Marcos, remember? <laughs> Chance of winning. But there 
There isn't. There is no hope. You are wrong, Miguel. I do not know you, not anymore. The man that I knew, he did not want to know if there was a chance or not. He did not demand hope. Oh, you are a stranger to me. <laughs> Forgive me, Sander. Please. <laughs> My son, let's go. I must warn you, there's a soldier on each side of the church and two in the back besides those in the plaza. Which door do you use when you leave at night? The front. Right. Let's go. There's not just bad, eh? Padre! Something wrong, my son? feel, Teresa. Do you? You must understand that what you did had to be done. Not to have cooperated with Chavez could have cost us everything we have in the world. Look at me. Look at you. What do we have left? Hello, Luis. It's me, Vicente. Vicente? Hey. Vicente, see, see, it is you. You are back. How are you, Luis? Fine, fine, Vicente. Oh, it is good you are back. But who is with you? Friend Luis, North Americanos, the Senores Barkley, their brother, he's in prison in Rio Blanco. See, si, see, si, I have heard. Captain Chavez holds him to exchange for you. See. Si. And you have come to try to free him? See, si, but I will need more men. There are no men, Vicente. What? Look outside. What do you see? Women. 
children, that is all. The men who are left are old and useless as I am. But uh, the others? The few that still fight, they are driven deep into the Oriente. You must go there to find them. It is too far. It will take too long. All right, then. We'll just have to get Heath out by ourselves. You cannot do that, senor. Chavez has too many men in Rio Blanco. He's right. We will need more guns. The time has come to face an ugly truth. Diaz has won. There is only one way that we can save Heath. Now, wait a minute, Vicente. If you're thinking of turning yourself in, forget it. Senor, he said forget it. Put the horses in Diago's shed. Si, senor. Hurry. The cellar, do that sometimes to trap us. We use this room once to hide supplies. says black powder. See? Si. I think we've got those guns we needed. Mexico. That he is, Father. Good, good. Is Heath all right? He is well. As well as any prisoner of Captain Chavez ever is. Father, can you get a message to him? I'm not sure. Will you try? Of course. What is the message? I am sorry, Padre. Captain's orders. No one may see the prisoner. Surely Captain Chavez cannot object if I give him this. You or one of your men can come with me. All right, Padre. Good day, my son. Hey, 
sergeant has been good enough to allow me to give you this. I hope it will give you comfort in these trying times. Thank you, Padre. Good day, my son. Padre. Have you seen Teresa? Yes. Do, do not judge her too harshly. She was forced to do what she did. I kind of figured that out for myself after I simmered down. When you see her... I will not see her. She has left Rio Blanco. Where'd she go? I do not know. No one knows, not even her father. I do not believe he will ever know. What he forced her to do has cost him Teresa's love. He has paid a very high price to protect his wealth and position. Good day, my son. Sergeant, why are the bells ringing at this hour? I don't know, Captain. Where are you going? You cannot leave your cot here. Yeah!
Papa. Go. Go. Come on, baby. No, senor. Come on, baby. No. I will stay here. And I will bury him next to my mother. And then I will ride to the Oriente and get his compañeros. And I will learn to fight the way he fought. Adios, amigos. Adios, Pepe. Not sleepy? Well, I guess that soft bed of mine is going to take some getting used to again. I have a feeling a soft bed isn't the only reason you can't sleep. I keep thinking about Vicente, about the way he died, breaking me out of that rotten jail. Stupid, useless waste of that man. Vicente could have beaten Diaz. The people were waiting for him. They would have followed him. Instead, he's dead. He's... You mustn't think like that. Vicente died doing what he believed in. You know, once when your father and I were with him in the Sierra Madre, he and his men fought a whole company of Frenchmen just to keep an old man from going to jail because he owed a three peso debt. You see, Vicente fought for people, not for some political cause or or some abstract ideal, but for people. And each one, that old man, you in Rio Blanca, your father and I in Durango, each one was important to him. And the people knew that. That's why they waited for him. That's why they followed him. And if his... if his death was stupid and useless, then his life was too. Because he died the way he lived. I guess I was kind of shortchanging him, wasn't I? In a way. Good night, Mother. Good night.
gonna be a good one. Pull him out proper. Well, darling, aren't you overdoing? I'm gonna ride him. I like to break him myself. Can't hardly tell which one of you worked the hardest. Look at you. No question. Me. <laughs> That horse will be nuzzling sugar from your pocket in just one more day, son. There ain't a thing on this place that boy can do. Not one single thing. I know. Back in Orleans. You ever figure to have a son like this, huh? I never did. Still hard to believe. <laughs> Two years, she still can't tell what hit her. <laughs> I can tell you, Miss Marvin. He's a preacher. And him asking you, do you take this man to be your... You ever feel sorry? Oh, God, don't you be silly. Henry! Thought you might like to take a look at these survey plans of the railroad spur. Make sure they don't lay that track right through your living room. <laughs> <laughs> I sure would. Young lady, you look prettier every time I see you. Well, then I'll have to ride over more often. <laughs> This time I came by to get some money from you. Fifty cents for the church supper at our place Saturday night. Fifty cents? Mm-hmm. Well, that's half a day's pay. If I know you, you'll eat more than that. We're never going to get to study those plans standing around out here. Put your shirt on, son, and come on in. Seeing how half this thing's going to be yours. Right, Paul. Paul, oh, did you like a cool drink? Mm, sounds wonderful. That's for me. Therese? Darling, I have to get my roses into water. Oh, well, be sure to come early Saturday night. You bet. We'll need some help with the tables. <laughs> <laughs> you like her, don't you? Who, Audra? Mm -hmm. Never thought about it. She has. I <laughs> don't mean a thing. We grew up together. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot the engineering notes. Here. Well, don't get involved with her. Not for your sake, darling. For hers. Going to the De Covens. Yes, why? Well, would you stop at the Marvin place for me? Henry likes to check his olives against ours. I meant to send them with you when you went over with Jared, but... What's the matter? Did you and Will have a fight? Oh, no, it... Well, it's just that I feel so awkward whenever I go over there. I keep remembering Mrs. Marvin. I mean, the real Mrs. Marvin. Oh, Audra. Therese is the real Mrs. Marvin. Well, I know, but... Well, he didn't have to marry again so soon. It, it was only a year. He was lonely. People do lots of things when they're lonely. Never mind. I'll send them over with Diego. Oh, that's all right. I, I'm going right by. I don't mind. Not really. Mr. 
Dr. Seeger, my spurs ready? Tomorrow, maybe. If you ask me nice. Well, you said you'd have them two days ago. Well, now, looking at a pretty face like yours, a man don't hardly know what he's saying. I'll expect you to have them tomorrow. Early. Last time, too. Oh. Tell the whiskey and fire don't mix. You know the rules, Seeger. No drinking on the job. Awful hot in here. I ain't heard nothing. Except me. My horse threw a shoe again. Well, can happen. No telling when a horse Second exactly. time in ten days, up by the river. I had to walk him all the way back in. Now suppose you walk on over to the office and pick up your time and get out of here. The sooner the better. Bring somebody? Nope. Just brought something over for your father. Otto? Well, darling, what a nice surprise. Almost as uh, pleasant as it is unexpected. Hello, Mrs. Marvin. Hello. Uh, Mother sent those olives over for your husband. Oh, thank you. You mean you rode all the way over here just for these? Well, I could have picked them up tonight. Tonight? Church supper. Oh, I told you, over at the Barclays. Oh, darling, I'm so terribly sorry. Sorry? <laughs> sorry for what? Well, the Wadens are coming over for dinner tonight. Well, they're sure not coming to see me. Well, they come as much to see you as any of us. Really, darling, the way she passes over you... Worth getting away just for that. What time? Well, it, it, it really isn't polite. Half past seven, okay? That'll be fine. Uh, hey, who you got me sitting with? Me. You want your money back? Can I get it? Nope. Well, then I guess I'll just have to suck. <laughs> bother you too? Billy. Um, how's the supper? Good. Real good. Night. Well, uh, about this afternoon, I guess that's why I really waited up. I, I just had to make sure that you understood. Forget it. I can't. I uh, wouldn't want you to think that I... I don't. Oh, I knew there'd be other Saturday nights and other suppers and other girls. I just couldn't stand to see you hurt your daddy. Hurt Pa? Well, darling, you know how proud of you he is. How he loves to show you off to all of his friends. It just isn't right to disappoint him, to hurt him. It isn't right to... to hurt anyone who loves you like that. But, uh... 
I never did mean to offend you. So, uh, kiss and make up? There's no need to argue about it now. There's uh, plenty of time to talk things over. Will, uh, your uh, daddy's got to sign some papers. He's, uh, he's going over to the Barclays Monday morning. Monday morning, I'll be in town. See ya. Well, what do you say you and me go get a beer, huh? I'll be right with you. I gotta stop at Sunshine. All right. What'll it be, Nick? Nice cold beer, please, Frank. You think you better take it a little easy? Nick. Nick Barkley. Hey, now, 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 now. Come on. Now, you listen to me. Your father happens to be a very dear friend of ours. And I don't think he'd like it too much if he knew I just stood around. Well, can't stand nobody's pleasure, can you? Come on, Will, let's go. Come I on. think maybe the poor boy don't want to go home. Well, now, it don't matter much what you think it matters to me. When I see a fella needing a drink, you're in the way, Singer. That's so. Well, why don't you just move me out? on your beer, Frank. I understand, Nick. All right, Will, let's go home. Well? anyway. Learner, I'd say. Not wine, no whiskey, nor anything. That's the way I raised him. And I don't think it funny for you fellas to wet him down and dump him uh, and try to laugh no, no, at no, all. Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell us that we brought him back here after we got him drunk? If you're looking for someone to tar, it seems to me you're looking in the wrong direction. You raise a colt, you teach him to carry a saddle. You raise a man, you teach him to carry a drink. Come on. I'll take care of it. Come on. You come with me, boy. All you need is a good... I'll get you. I'll give you a good 
I know it sounds horrible, whiskey to cure whiskey, but it really does help. It's called Hair of the Dog. Mm. You're very difficult. Then you always have been. You never did know what was good for you. You should have stayed home with me today. We could have talked. You wouldn't have gotten into any trouble. I'm all right now. Well, not yet. Now, you're not ready to face the world yet. You rest nice and easy. But you rest, I'll tell you, when all the whiskey's gone. I suppose it had to happen sometime. But you didn't have to go and get yourself sick over it. First drinks like anything else. First look at the ocean. First ride on a train. First love. First heartbreak. First stolen kiss. You do that to him? In his own house? You're dirt. I'm young. Oh, well, I've tried. You don't know how hard I've tried. I'm just not cut out for an old man's darling. And don't you try to make me say I'm sorry, because I'm not. I'm not sorry, nor shame, nor frightened either. Because I know that this is real. It's clean and it's good. You're trash. You're filth. Don't say that to me. Please don't say that to me. You do that to him? You're the scum of the earth. My own father. He's not your father. What'd you say? I said he's not your father. That's right. He took you out of an orphanage, and they were glad to get rid of you. He agreed to keep you. You were 24, and he had himself a free work hand, a slave, and that's all he ever wanted anyway. You're lying. I found the key to the safe. It's in his will. That's why he never lets you have a drink. It's in his contract with the orphanage. Oh, Will. Oh, darling, it doesn't have to be like this. I love you, Will. I've known it for months. Oh, please, Will. Please love me too, Will. Get out. Please, Will. Get out! <laughs> Down to supper. <laughs> it's his first time. He hasn't learned you gotta make yourself eat. Darling, I'll come with you. It's mighty sweet of you nursing them all afternoon. I don't know what I'd do without you. Daddy's here. He wants you down to supper, sugar. Boy, you'll feel better with some food in your stomach. You gotta try. Will? Why, oh, he's just a shame, darling. He can't face you yet. He's so very young. Now, don't you let it spoil your dinner. Please don't worry about him. He'll be back. Come on, darling. Come on.
Will. Evening, Jared. Well, come on in. I think Audra's in the living room. Well, what do you know? You can even walk. Will, how nice to see you. How are you, Miss Barkley? What happened? Your paw kick you out just for one little drunk? Oh, Nick. We were just going into supper. Won't you join us? Didn't come for supper, ma'am. Oh, something else? Job. A job? Well, what's the matter, Will? Doesn't your father have enough work for you? Always work to do, I guess. Comes a time when a man's got to break away. Start making out for himself. I thought you being friends, I... I see. Well, Nick does the hiring. Just so happens I'm short one man. You any good in the forge? Job needs doing, I can do it. $30 a month and keep. Tell Mac I said put you on, all right? Thanks. I wonder what happened. I wonder. Everything look all right to you, Will? I'll make out. You know, I don't like to pry, but... Well, I've known your father a good many years. As a matter of fact, he was one of my first clients. I wouldn't like to see him hurt. Maybe you ought to think this over a little more. Thought it over. Well, you know, sometimes things seem a lot worse than they really are. If you've had some little difference of opinion. No, nothing like that. We get along fine. Well, then it seems to me he'd be hurt all the more. You know, Will, your father's had a lot of hurt in his life already. All those years your mother was sick. I really think the only thing that got him through it was you. I don't think you have any real notion of how much you mean to your father. You can stop playing games. He's not my father. Who told you that? Don't matter who or how, I found out is all. Pick me out of an orphanage. Could have been me or any other. One, two, three. There's one who looks healthy and strong. Signed papers and put a ring through my nose. If I tried to run, he could have hauled me right back. Well, I don't think you run away from someone who means as much to you as he does. Is there some other reason? No. None. I told you. There's no other reason. Just... They let me think I was his own or so. Jared, believe me. Let it drop. Please. I wish I could. And I will. for the hour, but I'd like to see Henry. It's rather important. Of course. Um, won't you come in? Thank you. No business this morning, Jared. I've been up half the night. Will's gone. He's disappeared. Without even a trace. I know, Henry. He's over at our place. He rode over last night and asked for a job. Why? For no reason, not even a word. Well, he was pretty worked up. He, uh, he knows the truth about himself, about the orphanage. He couldn't. He couldn't miss and you let it out. I think you know better than that. You're the only other one that knows. It's written in my will. You have it in your safe right now. You have a copy, too? Under lock and key, like it's always been. He didn't get it from me. Who told him, Jared? I wish I knew. 
Henry, you mean Will isn't your son? Oh, darling, why didn't you ever tell him? We meant to. We always meant to. It's, it's just that the right time never seemed to come. Maybe it's because we didn't want it to come. Maybe it's because we loved him too much. Thought that if we told him, he'd understand that we weren't just holding him. There must have been something else that made him run. I'm afraid you'll have to ask him. I'll ride over and bring him back. Henry, wouldn't it be better if Will came back on his own? Oh, just you wait and see. He'll come running back. First little spat he has with Audra. Now, if you don't mind, I want to make sure that Henry gets some rest. He's just been so upset, poor darling. I'll stop by tomorrow, Henry. Goodbye. I know what's really bothering Will. It's that girl. Audra? She wants Will, and she won't stop at anything. But you're a man, darling, and I wouldn't expect you to understand. Go on. It's only lemonade. Listen, this is my drink from now on. Thank you, Mother, will you? For what? She's in town with Heath. Well, then, thank you. <sighs> Almost got away from me. You told Nick you could handle a forge. A forge, not a fire. Takes a man to do both. Left some tools. Moon! They got my mark. hoping to talk to you alone. Of course. Was my mama. I wouldn't argue with her. Here, my family's away. Oh, my. This is a wonderful room. Every time I come here, you know, my daddy used to keep his guns just like this. Then is the time I watched him oil and polish. You wanted to talk to me? Yes. Send him home, Audra. You can't hope to hold him. I'm not trying to. I, I didn't even know he was coming. Well, of course you have to say that, darling. I understand completely. Oh, but there's nothing Sometimes that... you can't do what you want. Sometimes you gotta stop and think of others. Do you know what you're doing to his daddy? I'm not doing anything to Mr. Marvin or Will or anyone else. Now, if you'll excuse me, please. Don't you princess with me. I know exactly what you're up to, sugar. Little Miss Soap and Starch Country Girl. Don't know A from B or which from what. Gonna be pure shock to death when I tell her. You're not the only one he's looked at. That's right, little country girl. Things like that happen. Everywhere I go, everywhere I turn, he's been after me, me, for months. I don't believe that. 
It's your second choice, darling. Strictly hand me down. I think Will ought to hear this. Order! Will! Will! some reason. Audra! Well, she... she was saying such wild things. I, I said I was going to get you, and she grabbed the gun and... What kind of wild things? She said you were always after her. It was the other way around. He'll kill Paul when he finds out the truth about her. Well, you should have seen him when he brought her home. It was like she started a whole new life for him. I mean, he never had much of one before that. Not with Ma and her being sick all those years. I can say it was an accident and not tell him the rest. No, the sheriff will be asking questions. But Jerry will know what to do. Listen, I don't want you to have to lie. But it's not really a lie. It was an accident. Oh, Will, I thought you... Mother... She... I, I did it, ma'am. It was an accident. Tilling. Well, I thought I heard somebody. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, did you give me a hard time. But it don't matter now that you're back. It don't matter one bit. <laughs> it just goes to show you what pure foolishness a man can do. <laughs> I should have told you about the orphanage and... I should have told them how to hold a drink and not worried about them taking them away. Paul, I got plans for you, Will. I got big plans, yes, sir. Starting today, Will. Paul, will I you want stop? You, I want... Will you... Will you listen? Was well, something wrong? Paul. Don't, please, you'll hurt yourself more. What happened? I asked you what happened. It was an accident, Henry. Over at our place. Your place? She came to get me, Pa. To bring me home. We was in the gun room with Audra. Audra? Audra killed her? No, Pa. It, it, it was me. But it was an accident, Pa. She, she picked up the gun, admiring it like. And Audra told her to put it away because, well, it, it might go off. But, pa, then I reached for the gun and... Pa, it's the truth. Truth is, it was the girl's fault. 
That's pretty wild talk. She didn't tease him to come over there. Therese wouldn't have had to follow after him. And she wouldn't be lying dead in the wagon. Oh, no, Pa. Underneath that pretty face and that sweetness. You're wrong. Pa, if you just stop and listen. I gotta make arrangements. I don't know yet. Steve just said he wants to see us. Steve? Uh, sorry to have you ladies drive all the way in, but uh, I'm afraid it was necessary. Mr. Berkeley? Mr. Seeger, how nice to see you sober. Sober on the day of the shooting, too. So I can recall the real plane. Now, Bert, you weren't there. Nick ran you off last week. I'll leave in time to pick up my tools. That's why I went back. All right. Now, you tell them what you told me. Sure. Like I just said, I'm getting my tools, and Mrs. Marvin rides up and says to the girl, I want to talk to you inside. So, the two of them go in the house together. Just the two of them? There was just two of them in there when the gun went off. That's not true. Will Marvin says he was in there also. Now, why would he lie? He's stuck on a girl. Want to help her out, wouldn't he? Maybe save that pretty neck from a stretching. Mr. Seeger, I've lived here a good many years. I've seen men lie for a drink or a dollar. But to lie out of mean personal spite and to try and destroy a young girl's life... I warn you, Mr. Seeger. When we get through with you, there will be no place in this entire valley that you can hide. No place. Just tell them what happened is all. No, I have been figuring on moving down Fresno away. But if you need me for the hearing, I'll stay. All right. Audrey, he is lying, isn't he? Now, that don't mean I can keep his mouth shut. Now, he'll talk his head off at the inquest. Inquest? I didn't think you needed an inquest. I've got to call one now. Friday afternoon, 3 o'clock, here. Now remember, honey, you won't just be talking to us, you'll be talking to a coroner's jury. Most of them friends of Henry's probably just come from the funeral. They'll be feeling sorry for him. I know. That's why you have to be absolutely sure of what you're going to say. I'm sure. Is there anything you've forgotten? Anything at all? Nothing. It was an accident. You'll swear to it? Yes. Now, you say she picked up the gun and Will grabbed for it. Yes. So Seeger is lying. Yes. Audra, I'm only trying to help. Now, oh, come on. There's nothing to be frightened about. You know, the word accident can mean a lot of different things. If Will grabbed for the gun because he was worried, that is how it happened. You keep asking me. I'm sorry, but if it did happen some other way, I told you! I mean, he could have grabbed for that gun for a lot of different reasons, if Therese were angry or upset. She wasn't! You're sure? Yes, he wasn't even in the... He wasn't even in the room. You were the only one there with her. Yes. It was you who grabbed for the gun. She picked it up. I was so frightened. Why? Why? She was so angry, so, so wild. Why? Why, Audra? I can't tell you. Audra, Jared can't defend you unless you tell him the whole truth. Oh, honey, I can't build a wall without any bricks. Oh, Jared, I don't want to hurt anybody. Who? Audra, if I have to ask you all night and all day, I want to know who it is you're protecting. 
Now listen to me. I've got a pretty good idea already, but I need to hear you say it. Jared, I can't tell you. You'll have to ask Will. There he is. Besides you, I'd take it slow and easy on him, Nick. Heard tell you can catch more flies with sugar than with vinegar. Yeah, I know, but I don't happen to be hunting flies. Come on, get. Just coming over to see you. Why? What's the matter? I just thought you'd like to know that Audra's got us worried. She seems pretty upset since she heard about that inquest. Inquest? Seeger told the sheriff you weren't even in the room when it happened. Oh, well, you know Seeger. He's lying. Is he? Well, Audra finally broke down. She said the same things. Now, Will, what is all this about? She said you could tell us. But there must be some mistake. Oh, no, no. No, 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 no mistake. She's holding something back. There's no question she's scared, and so are you. Are you going to tell me why, Will? Now, if you're telling the truth, let go of my horse. I'm afraid this isn't going to wait. Look! All right, now, boy, you're going to start talking. Hey, now, that's enough! I don't know. I've just started. Now, boy, you better start talking while you can. Let go! When you come off. Nick! Well, just pure boyish spirits, I suppose. Just trying to dig the truth out of them is all. Well, wait a minute. Well, brother Nick, with your usual flair, you've locked the cage before we caught the bird. Well, someone had to open him up. What are you doing here? I was hoping to talk to Will. some things to do, Pa. Kind of got behind. Well, I guess I just can't get used to the quiet around here. And I thought you'd be home for... What happened? Nothing, Pa. It was nothing. You don't get cut up like that for nothing. Who done it to you? Well, you take my word for it, Pa. It, it doesn't matter. Well, it matters to me. Now, who done it? You have a run-in with somebody? I ask you a question, son. I like an answer. Now, who was it? Nick Barkley. Why? We had an argument, was all. Just an argument. Over what? Look, Pa. A it's... girl? Why? You know something they don't want you to say. Like maybe you never did go into that house after all. Maybe it was just Audra and Therese. Maybe it wasn't an accident. No, no, you're wrong, Pa. It's just like Seeger says. All you see is the girl. I don't count for nothing with you. You're wrong, Pa. Don't talk like that. All right, I'll give you one more chance. Say what you know. Tell me what it is Audrey don't want you to say. All right. I left some supper for you. Go in and get it. Open up! Come on, open up! Open up, or do I have to bust it open? Henry! <laughs> you! You're the one I want. That's a pretty face, all right. No wonder the boy can see nothing else. No wonder he couldn't see the blood on your hands. 
Yeah, he could have told me. You killed her, didn't you? You picked up that gun and you shot her down when she tried to get him back. Just a minute, Henry. Come on now, admit it! Henry! I think you better go. You'll pay for this. You'll all pay for it. For what you've done to Therese. What you've done to me. Pa! I heard you ride out. It's just as well you're here. You can tell her for yourself. Tell her you can't protect her no more. Don't you look at him like that. He's gonna tell the truth. He can't cover up no more. I'm afraid no one can cover it up any longer, Henry. They couldn't tell you about Therese. Because the truth is, she came here for Will. She came because I wanted him back. Because she wanted him back. You say just what you mean. I think you know what I mean, Henry. I always thought you were a decent man. I'd heard rumors about her before, but I guess I never wanted to believe them. Then after the shooting, I had to find out for sure. I checked up on her in New Orleans. You went prying behind my back. I asked questions, I got answers. She was 17 when she took her first husband. Two years later, he was killed in a duel involving her honor. Four months later, Henry, she married the man that killed him. The lies, all lies! Less than a year after that, he brought suit for divorce. The charge was adultery. First her life, and now her good name. Don't part, it's true, he's right! Stop it, he's telling the truth! She was no good. That's why Will had to run to get away from her. She thought that I was keeping him here and said all sorts of things. When I told her I was going to go talk to Will, she... She grabbed the gun and... He couldn't tell you. He couldn't hurt you. He loves you that much. Change the line a little and put the railroad spur through here. Yeah. It'll be better for both of us. That's pretty fine orchard land. Put in a crop of peaches, apricots, plums, and that'll cut the loading cost down, way down. That's a good idea you've got. He got it. <laughs> I learned them pretty fair, huh? Pretty fair. Mother's setting the table for lunch. We were hoping you'd stay. Well, yes or no? It'll be a pleasure, Audra. I'll join you in a minute. It's good to see you smile again, Henry. Well, I'll tell you, Jared. Deep down, I guess, I always knew about Therese. But I put blinders on. Made a deal with myself. After all those empty years, I... I had to buy what time I had left. You had two good years. She was so young and pretty. Always laughing. Can't be sorry for that. Let's have lunch. 